because seating is limited as we are practicing social distancing or what some people call physical distancing. Um, other than that, I would like to say that uh, Sunday School, we will be handing out materials for virtual Sunday School on Sunday the 27th after the 915 service and also from 12 o'clock to noon. So if your child is of the age of Sunday School, uh, please uh, note that you can pick up materials for the virtual class services that uh, sessions that will be held um, on Sunday morning after the uh, 915 service. Now let's prepare our hearts for worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom the secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves to the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. Your compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown. Things we have done, and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you, and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we can live and serve you in the newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, more. Amen. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
while the wheat eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not, not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in the honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel, according to Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forget? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slave. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, Lord, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused, and he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all the debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy, had mercy on your fellow slave, as I had mercy on you. And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my Heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and mercy and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. This, of course, is the beginning of fall, and I think about fall. I also think about football, the beginning of the football season. And there's one cartoon that always comes to mind about Lucy and Charlie Brown. <laughs> and Lucy is the prankster who always pulls this trick on Charlie Brown. She wants to hold the football like a, a Homer would for an extra point, but Charlie Brown kicks it. But as it always happens, Lucy holds the football, and Charlie Brown takes a running start, and right when he's in the kicking motion, when his foot should hit the resistance of the football, Lucy yanks the football up uh, past Charlie Brown, his legs go flying up in the air, and he lands on his back. And this plays out many times in Charles Schultz's Peanuts cartoons. And each time, Lucy tries to convince Charlie Brown, Listen, I won't do that trick anymore. You'll get to kick the football this time. And of course, she always pulls the football away. So I am sympathetic with Peter's question. Lord, if my brother sins against me, how many times do I have to forgive him? I mean, do you have to be like Lucy or, or fall to Lucy's tricks all the time? And sometimes... Forgiveness, in the word that Jesus says, no, you have to forgive 70 times 70, sounds like we have to get caught up in these abusive cycles or relationships where the same thing happens over and over again. But that's not the point that Jesus is driving home here. What Jesus is actually saying is, you have to be generous as your Father in heaven is generous. If someone comes to you truly repentant of their sins, you must forgive. But that does not mean that you have to get caught up in their tricks of deceit. But still, the gift of forgiveness is a tremendous blessing. 
and not to be taken lightly. Because the cost of not forgiving someone and not practicing forgiveness is seen in each life and in communities and families and throughout the world. It, result, it, it, it manifests itself in grudges and resentments. Past robs the present of its joy because people cannot forgive. And you have cycles of conflict and violence that evolve. They're famous examples of that. In American lore, one of the famous examples is the Hatfields and the McCoys. There are two families that are feuding with each other. And this is an all-out war. And no one can actually get to the genesis of the, or the, the initial reason of why this broke out. They know that it just goes on and on. One conflict and another retaliation followed by another retaliation and so on and so forth. The Bible has its stories about people who suffered their own destruction because they cannot forgive David and his own family had children that killed each other because they could not forgive the other brother for what he had done. The price of unfor not forgiving is very, very high. Yet, like all gifts and blessings from God, forgiveness itself can be abused. Just like Lucy on the football, and of course that's a trivial example, but there are many that are very, very powerful and effective, affects us today. The gift of forgiveness allows us, however, to break the cycle and also allows for new life to be experienced and to have our hearts transformed. Forgiveness is a blessing, but like every blessing, it can be abused. When I was in confirmation, they taught us the keys of the kingdom. And that is that every Christian has the power to say to those people who are repentant that your sins are forgiven because of what Jesus Christ has done for you. Because of his works on the cross. You are forgiven. And every time, every service, I stand up and say after we have confessed our sins, that our sins are forgiven because of the love of God that we find in His Son. Yet the keys of the kingdom have a second part that we seldom hear. And that is that all those who are unrepentant are still living in their sins. Now that does not mean that God has withheld His grace. But rather the unrepentant are still turning their backs upon the very thing that can bring them wholeness of life and healing. And so, confession is such an integral part of receiving forgiveness. Not that God refuses to give. God always eagerly gives. But because that means if you're unrepentant, if you don't confess, then you are basically turning your back upon the grace of the one who committed the crime must confess so that she and or he can receive the full benefits of forgiveness offered. We suffer the illusion that we have done no wrong when we refuse to repent, when we refuse to make confession for the sins that we have committed. Forgiveness is a blessing that benefits it benefits both those who are the offender and those who are offended. It benefits both parties involved. And this past week, we heard that it was the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. Countless horrors of atrocities happened during the war as in most and uh, one of the most egregious was the Holocaust. And I was reading where the uh, survivor of the Holocaust, a famous uh, a survivor, Elie Wiesel, actually upon the uh, year 2000, 
requested that a formal apology from the German government for the Holocaust. Now, he did not do this in order to rub their noses and their past offenses. That had been well documented. And not only that, had it been recorded in history that the details of such horrors had been examined in the court of law. But he wanted to do this because he knew if the German asked for an apology, it would open the doors of reconciliation, a new life. And the Prime Minister of Germany, Johannes Rau, did exactly that. Two weeks later, he asked for an apology from the Jewish people, and it was granted. And hopefully, new life out of that was begun. There is a tremendous gift in the gift of forgiveness, both for the one who gives forgiveness and the one who receives forgiveness, both for the offender and also the offended. And kid yourselves, don't kid yourselves, we will be both in this life. And this is why Jesus taught us to pray, Lord, forgive us our trespasses we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. Amen.
drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies and Sunday schools, confirmation classes, and youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and growth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The heights of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation. For human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, we look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Bring healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by death. Feed all who hunger and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still, our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have called us through the power of your Holy Spirit to live in community with you and with one another. We ask, Lord, that during this difficult time when we practice physical distancing, that we would all never practice social distancing and try to live unto ourselves, but rather we would try to reach out to those people who we know are lonely, who we know are hurting, who may need our assistance. We lift up before you all in our community who are hurting. We pray for the family of Megan. Pray for John, Ray, for Virginia, June, Jeremiah, Linda, Gary, Bill, for Rose, John, Liz, Ray, Stephanie, Gary, and those we name before you in our hearts at this time. Grant them wholeness and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. We thank you for those who have shown us faithfulness, for the knees that taught us how to bow to you, and the tongues that taught us to praise you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things, and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now.